Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I uh, hope you can uh, hear me. Hope you can uh, see me. If you can, uh, if you can let us know, that's always a good start, isn't it? If you are joining us here today, fantastic, fabulous to have you here. If you're watching this uh, later on demand on the uh, Admiral's YouTube channel, then you know once again it's great to uh, it's great to have you here. If you are watching us on the YouTube channel, then be sure to subscribe to the Admiral's channel and uh, you know give us a thumbs up or even a thumbs down, depending upon whether you found this useful, or maybe you've got ideas for things that we'd like to where uh, you'd like us to cover in the future. That's absolutely fine by us. So uh, by all means. Uh, uh, you know, put in your comments there and questions there. Um, so today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, trading intraday reversals on um, FX markets. OK, we're just going to focus on primarily FX markets. OK, there are opportunities for us to talk about doing that in other asset classes uh, in future sessions in, uh, in 2022. Uh, and as always, you know, as I always say, I appreciate that, uh, you know, we have a global audience here who join us for our sessions for our uh, Admiral's Trading Spotlight webinars. So you're all welcome. It's great to have you here from wherever you are joining us in the world. And I also recognize that we have a, a wide range of experience in the room from people who are complete and utter beginners to trading to people who've been trading for a uh, for a good few years. So uh, you're all welcome. Hopefully there'll be all something here to uh, to take from you, whether you're a new trader or an experienced trader. Um, as always, I just want you to be able to take a few things that you could utilize in your own trading uh, tomorrow. That's that's kind of you know what we like to sort of, you know, pass and uh, share with you and um, as i said if you have experience of intraday trading fx uh, uh, markets okay in terms of trading reversals it'd be great to hear what your own experience is and what you particularly look for i think it always makes for a, yeah, a more engaging conversation so with uh, without further ado let's uh, let me bring up the slides okay and we'll uh, go through the slides and then if there's time at the end we'll switch across to the live charts and see what's uh, what's been going on to uh, today so be sure to stay with us to the end whilst we uh, uh, do that. And um, that's great. Thank you, uh, Peter. Thank you, Vincenzo. Thanks for uh, letting me know you're here and your dates. Great to uh, great to see you here. Great to see everybody here. As I said, uh, you're all very very welcome. So just bear with us a second. Let's bring up the slides and uh, we'll have a uh, we'll we'll do a good uh, we'll do a good session for uh, for everybody here. So just uh, here we go. Just bring all of these up here. I've got so much uh, stuff going on. Uh, here we go. Excellent. Here we go. There we go. So, as I said, apologies for that. Hopefully, you know you can uh, you can see the uh, slide. You can hear me. You can see me. These are all the important things. All right, okay, for us to be able to for us to be able to start today, we've got a good uh, got a good list of uh, people here today. And as I said, if you've had experience, uh, you know, okay, of uh, intraday trading uh, intraday FX reversals, then you know by all means, it'd be great to hear what your own experiences be, what you particularly like to look out for. I'm going to share. I'm going to share some of the elements of that uh, that I do for my own. Okay, um, you know, there's kind of a bit more of a uh, uh, how shall I say, you know, a bit more kind of a, uh, a, a major uh, sort of a, a way that I look to do it. But I'm, what I'm going to do is share this, some simple elements today that you can take away and utilize in your uh, own trading from tomorrow. That's what we want. Hartmut, good afternoon to you. Great to to have you here. Okay, uh, as I said, I appreciate we've got a truly global audience, and it's fantastic to see you all here with us today. Um, and here we are, Admirals, okay, a uh, Forex and CFD broker that is, you know, has global presence with uh, local support and uh, is licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products and allowing the opportunity to engage with markets using the uh, MT4, MT5 platforms and also the uh, Admiral Supreme Edition. Any questions about Admirals, be sure to get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to help. Uh, and if you want more timely information on site, well, then you can now follow Admirals on Telegram. You can see us there. The handle is there, is at Admirals. Okay, there's always a uh, great information being put out there. So if you're a Telegram user, be sure to uh, uh, sort of follow us there. So what we're going to talk about today? Well, uh, we're going to talk about you know why is reversal trading so popular? Um, and there, there are there are ways and reasons and means for that okay and uh, you know maybe that's a question for yourself here joining us you know for those joining us here today why do you think reversal trading is so popular what is it that seems to capture the imagination of uh, of traders especially beginning traders but we'll talk about that we'll talk about you know what do we need to look for when in today trading fx reversals what are the kind of things that we can uh, utilize to help us you know and most importantly how can we do it you know successfully how can we trade 
intraday reversals successfully okay so as i said uh, i'm going to show you some elements of, uh, of what i do myself all right i'll be happy to share them with you uh, and hopefully it'll be just uh, kind of simple elements that you can sort of as i say take away recognize identify and utilize them from tomorrow that's um, that's what we're looking for here those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's uh, Paul. I've traded for uh, for many years, traded for funds, traded for myself. Uh, primarily, I like to look to trade FX indices and commodities. And uh, for my longer term trading, okay, I tend to be a uh, trend trader. But for my intraday trading, okay, which is what we're going to focus on today as well, I tend to work on focusing on trading reversals and mean reversion. That's uh, that's what tends to work for uh, for myself. So as I said, I'm going to be showing you just a, a few simple elements of of you know what I do myself, uh, and hopefully that will give you a good start in terms of you know uh, how to uh, uh, trade intraday FX versus. So you know. Um, as, as the slide says, all right, many traders like to trade trends and many like to trade reversals. And, uh, you know, we did a session, you know, not well, earlier this week, okay, about, you know, trading trends for beginners. And, and almost here is like the opposite side of it, okay, we're going to like to look at trading reversals. Uh, and the question is, you know, if you are a reversal trader, then what can you do to improve your chances of success? As I said, you know, if you've got some experience of uh, intraday trading, intraday trading reversals, you know, in FX markets or any other markets, it would be great to hear, you know, what has been your own experience, okay? What have you found has worked well for you? What have you found, you know, or maybe you've struggled with? What have been your particular challenges? It's always great to hear, you know, everyone else's experience kind of adds to the kind of the colour of our session here today, you know, and I might be able to, to help you just give you a little bit of, um, uh, you know, pithy insight based upon my own experience. So it says, you know, there are many ways for traders to understand reversals so that they can position themselves accordingly. And in this session, we'll discuss how to identify reversals and how to engage with markets that are in the process of reversing. So, as I said, it's a uh, <clears throat> there's quite a few different ways to do it, you know, and, and you know, there are very many ways to sort of trade intraday FX reversals. But I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to share a couple of like simple uh, elements, you know, to with you today. Hopefully that will help you in your own uh, in your own trading endeavors. So uh, first questions first, as always, you know, as, as I kind of alluded to uh, on the previous slide, you know, the question has to be asked, you know, why, why are you trading reversals? What is it about reversals that, you know, that A, appeal to you and, and B, make you think that you might have an edge that could, you know, that could, uh, could uh, generate, you know, good returns, good results for you? Uh, you know, it might seem a bit of a strange question for the session if, if you know, if you're a completely new trader, but I think it's really crucial for the drivers it really is you know and you have to think about are, are you trading reversals because you have an edge or because your ego is in control which if you're a complete beginner you might not necessarily understand or recognize but very often what i find with with new traders is that you know they they like to think they're trading reversals but when you actually uncover and go deeper with them into understanding why they're trading reversals very often it's driven by ego What's happened is that they have actually sort of missed the trend, all right? They've missed the trend. And as I said, we did trading trends for beginners, you know, just a few days ago. So uh, be sure to go and check that out on the uh, Admiral's YouTube channel for you to get further uh, insight or understanding. But while I say as new traders, you know, they have missed the trend, okay? And they've missed the trend and actually they're a bit grumpy. They're a bit frustrated. Their ego is telling them that actually, you know, it knows best, all right? It knows better than what's the market's going on. And actually what happens is you find traders just trying to trade reversals because they're just trying to pick the top they're just trying to think this trend has gone too far i think it's going to reverse i'm going to try and sort of trade a reversal into that so they're not really trading a reversal because of any particular pattern or any particular rationale or any particular you know uh, overall strategy it's because they missed they missed the big trend and now their ego is wanting them to basically sort of you know just try and reclaim a little bit of glory by trying to pick the top you know or the the bottom so you find quite a lot of new traders try to do that and it's their ego they want to be able to go and tell their friends that they call the top in the market okay or they call the bottom in the market and that's all just driven by ego and not unsurprisingly that uh, the people who operate that you know they tend not to do as well as they'd like to think all right they'll get it right eventually okay and they'll tell you that you know they call the top in the market but they won't tell you about the nine times they were wrong on the way up there okay because they're, they're trading reverses for, for, for 
for all the wrong reasons. What we need to do is to work out, you know, well, actually, how can I have an edge? Okay, how can I have an edge trading reversals on an intraday basis? What is it that I think will help me, that will actually, you know, separate me from the crowd, okay, separate me from those kind of ego-induced punters, right, and, and will actually mark me out as a, uh, as, you know, as a, as a professional, you know, engaged with markets and committed to sort of trading markets from a, from a position of having an edge. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about later before we get into the, uh, the actual specific elements. So um, we talked about this earlier, you know, when we talked about it in terms of, you know, trading for trends, but, you know, equally it's, it's, it's important if you're going to trade reversals, you know, and it is important, you know, especially if you're going to do it on an intraday basis, you know, it's important. The first part, you know, I expect a trader to be able to understand is, is actually understand those kind of those phases of the markets, right? It should be quite clear, you know, quite clear indeed, all right. You know, I tell people that constantly, you know, a good trend should leap off the chart at you, whether it be, you know, a downtrend there on the left or an uptrend on the right. You know, a good trend should leap off the chart. And, you know, there's there's no there's no timeline, you know, on these uh, or time frames on these particular charts, because actually it just doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter whether it's a five minute chart or a monthly chart. You know, the ability to identify, you know, what kind of phase the market is in, what kind of environment is, is absolutely crucial and key. It is simply even also, you know, to basically to trading sideways markets. And this is where it becomes more interesting to, to me. So, I mean, as I said earlier, my longer term trading, I tend to effectively like to trade trends, you know, for my uh, longer term, you know, FX trading. OK, I like to basically use strength and weakness to identify the worst or strongest trends and try to trade those. OK, that that suits me for my long term trading. But on an intraday basis, OK. On a short, it's almost the quite, it's weirdly, it's quite the opposite. My view is that actually, for most of the time, okay, and about no, up to about 80% of the time, you know, markets are range bound on an intraday basis. They might, you know, they might close a little bit higher or a little bit lower, but but actually, what happens is, you know, let's just say, you know, that the market might open here, you know, uh, and and close just a little bit, a little bit higher, okay. So, you know, it's effectively, it's, you know, it's a risen day, but the intraday trading action in between could actually be you know just an awful lot of effectively range bound trading okay that actually you know that 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 you know you don't really identify or understand if you're looking at like say daily charts weekly charts above but if you're looking at shorter time frames so invariably you know that becomes an interesting series of patterns okay as i said this these charts here you know they're not really particularly you know they're not really particularly any time frame but you know you can see here that you know we kind of entered into that area there closed out here but you can see for yourself that actually there's been an awful lot of swings on an intraday basis there okay on that particular chart and that's what i believe happens when we're looking at intraday charts yes there will be days okay on an intraday basis where markets trend okay trend strongly we've seen that yesterday and today which we'll look at uh, today but you know for the majority of times you know for the majority of time i think that actually you know uh, intraday markets are mostly range bound when I mean, they're mostly range bound that puts me a different type of opportunity for my longer term trading. So, you know, markets that are a little bit range bound, going a little bit sideways there, you know, they appeal to me, okay, when I uh, when I see them on an intraday basis. But also equally, you know, when uh, I see the sort of second part of uh, phases of markets, which is about transitioning markets, transitioning from downtrend to uptrend. You know, we can see here markets in a downtrend, it then actually basically just fell vertically. And I, you know, I always say this once you once you see a market going vertical, whether it be you know up or down, it's normally kind of getting towards the end, or right? it's kind of it's the blow off. It's the last people to the party before actually you know the market basically you know it uh, consolidates. And then it basically starts to, to sort of, you know, maneuver its way, it transitions from that downtrend to an uptrend. Same with here, market's been an uptrend. It starts to give you a, a hint that it's almost done when it prints this, this evening star. It has one last little push, okay? It's a bit of a false breakout before it then basically starts to create lower highs before it rolls over and, and, and reverses, okay? You know, not what I tell people is, you know, regardless of what kind of style of trading you do, you know, it's important for you to try and get a picture and understand, okay, what phase is the market in? If you can identify as a new trader, you know, one of my phases, you're in a good place, right? It's a good starting point. It's a good starting point. Very often, you know, new traders, they just turn up and I just, you know, I'll, you know I'm just going to trade pin bars, Paul. You 
but on an intraday basis. So they have a tactic, but they have no real understanding of the market environment they're operating in. What you want to be able to do is have a, you know, an understanding of the market environment, which phases it in, all right? And then from that, then you can sort of employ the right tactics for the, for the right particular environment. Now, you know, I've just very quickly and easily demonstrated and explained that I recognize that when you're a completely new trader, that might not be as easy to see. There is no easy way around that. You know, you get better at it by practicing, okay? By every day going through markets, it doesn't really actually matter what markets, just pull up a chart of anything and start to go through and analyze those markets, try to identify those good phases. And you've heard me bang on about it and time and time again. Good trends will leap off the chart. Right? Good trends will almost like leap off the chart. You don't, don't try and force it. If you find yourself forcing, okay, then that is you projecting what you want onto the market, not what the actual market is doing. You know, with practice, you're much, much better at that. But as I said, identifying the kind of phase market is a helpful starting point to start to say, you know, where how are we going to operate? What are we actually going to particularly look for? So but, you know, when it comes to trading intraday FX reversals, you know, there are lots of different ways you can do it. There's lots of elements, there's lots of different setups, and people will have their own particular ideas and thoughts. Um, for me, okay, you know, what becomes very, very simple is, is, you know, I'm looking for confluence of events, okay? And, you know, what can help me is when I understand, you know, certain just simple elements, which I'm going to share with you today, and they start to come together that is actually very, very useful for me in terms of places to look where I look to do my business. So understanding price action candlesticks, which we're going to have a little look at today, but I'm not going to go into them in absolute depth. But if you want to go into the ones I talk about in depth, you will find that there are individual videos on the Admiral's YouTube channel that you can just basically going to watch and get as much insight out of them as possible. We're going to look about reversal patterns. I mean, we're going to trade reversals, so we might as well know what good reversal patterns are. And I'm also going to talk a bit about previous days, highs and lows. And you know, it can include previous weeks, highs and lows, but as a general rule, previous days, highs and lows. And as I start to combine those kind of three elements together, that is what gives me the idea and you know, where I can actually look to do the, the best piece of my, uh, of my particular business. So let's have a look at the first part, right? Price action candlesticks, okay? What people sometimes forget is that by their nature, candlesticks are a reversal pattern. Okay, just so I'll say that again, by their nature, candlesticks are a reversal pattern, which means that actually it needs to have something to reverse, all right, which might sound, you know, completely rational common sense. But when you're trading an intraday market, it might not be your rational, rational version of yourself that is sat there trying to trade, <laughs> excuse me. What it is, is you need to have something to reverse. And what actually happens is, you know, you identify just a few simple price action candlestick patterns that there are many, many out there. OK, and you can go on to the Internet, you can go on to the Admiral's charts, uh, Admiral's uh, website and find lots of information on all sorts of candlesticks. But here's very four very simple ones, which you'll hear me constantly talk about because I use them every day, because, you know, I like to use them because actually they're quite visual, they're quite simple. And I, and I, as I use them as part of a, a bigger plan, okay, that's when they start to help and, you know, and benefit and play out very well for me. So first one is, you know, rejection candles, pin bars, okay, here we are here. They are very, 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 very popular, very, very simple, very visual, okay. But remember what I'm saying, you know, candlesticks are reversed, the pattern, it has to have something to reverse. So, you know, if, if the market is just going sideways, okay, and you have a, a pin there, it's not necessarily that helpful to you, as opposed to, you know, a market that has been basically moving up, which then prints a, you know, a, 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 you know, a bearish pin bar, okay, a bearish candle. Remember, you need to have something to reverse. And as I said, there is plenty of information, okay? You know, there's other videos we've done on the Admiral's uh, YouTube channel, which you can tap in to get, you know, real in-depth, you know, uh, insight on that. Next, very simple, you know, engulfing candles, okay? Engulfing candles, you know, as the name implies, all right, the candle engulfs the preceding one. But once again, these are only really useful to us at the end of a trend when it gives us something to reverse. That is what we want. So if my, from my price is going up, then I want, then I'm happy to see a, you know, a bearish engulfing candle. Uh, and alternatively, you know, if price has been, if price has been basically in a, in a downtrend, that is when I'm happy to see a, you know, a bullish engulfing candle before we move up. 
Okay, once again, there's videos there on the on the YouTube channel. Be sure to look at it. Um, what we also have is is key reversal candles, which you know can be they can a key reversal candle can actually be you know kind of a mixture of you know an engulfing candle and a pin bar. They don't happen very often, but when they happen at the end of trends, I personally like them. What is for me a key reversal candle is you can see here price has been pushing up, price pushes to a new high, but then rolls over and closes. This is the important thing, closes beneath the low of the previous candle because there's been a switch, all right? The market has shifted, it's changed. On the flip side, you know, price has been coming down during the session, price pushes to a new low, but then and push it up and it closes above the high of the previous candle. That is just showing a complete reversal, okay, of, uh, of momentum and sentiment, okay? And as I said, they don't happen very often, but when they do, at the end of trends, at certain places, you know, that's when I uh, that's when I particularly like them as a trade opportunity. And the last one are star formations. So we have a morning star formation, which is basic price will have gone down. You get the first candle, all right, is a big bearish candle, followed by it might be a doji, a spinning top, but in an FX market, it's normally something like a, you know, a, a rejection candle, followed by a strong bullish candle, and we expect price to move up. And on the flip side, okay, an evening star, you know, we're expecting prices going up, we get a good strong bullish candle, followed by could be a doji, could be a spinning top, might just be a hanging man like this, before the third candle is a really strong bearish candle. You know, the market has reversed. So, as I said, if you can start to learn as new traders, just identifying those four candlestick setups, okay, and that will stand you in good stead. But remember, it has to be at the end of something to reverse. That is what we are particularly looking at. So that's my first thing I want to be taking on board, my price action candlesticks. The next is then looking at price action reversal patterns, okay? We've just looked there at candlesticks, which might be, you know, a one candle, a two candle, or a three candle, you know, kind of setup. But they in themselves can be part of a bigger price action reversal pattern, all right? Reversal pattern. As the name implies, what we're expecting is, you know, price is going to reverse direction. It's going to come out of that pattern in the, in the opposite direction that it came in, okay? Which is quite the opposite of a continuation pattern. Fancy that, all right? So, and what we'll find, and what, you know, particularly I uh, particularly like, are using things like uh, double tops and bottoms. You can see on here, you know, as the name implies for completely new traders, okay, you would expect to see a double top, a little bit of a neckline. The entry can be a little bit, people can, you know, change the entry a little bit based upon what they, uh, they see, depending upon also their risk profile. But what's more important, when you see a double top, is that, you know, it's, it, is it's quite a clear double top. Or on the flip side, a double bottom where price has kind of drifted down. It's created this double bottom, you know, before price reverses and goes up. So double tops, double bottoms, they're always worth looking out for. Then we have head and shoulders patterns, okay? And, you know, and once again, you're going to see, you know, a left shoulder, a head and a right shoulder. Under classical technical analysis, the right shoulder should be lower than the left shoulder to give you an indication that momentum is already rolling over. But you know, that's nice and it's pretty, but in an intraday basis, don't always expect to see that, okay? Your markets can be scruffy, you know, market makers can be looking to, to sort of, you know, sort of manipulate and, and play games. So, you know, we, we always like to look for real pretty patterns, but, you know, what you want and what you get in intraday trading FX markets, you know, can be sometimes very different. So, you know, be adaptable, okay? Be, be uh, agile, nimble, adaptable to, to what? To, to what goes on and on the flip side of that okay inverse head and shoulders here okay just as the name implies exactly the opposite okay you'll have a left shoulder a head pan and a right shoulder people would like the right shoulder to be higher than the left shoulder but as i said you know don't be uh, don't be surprised if you know if you don't get that if it's a little scruffier than that you should be able to identify a good you know solid neckline that will give you an idea of where to where to enter that particular uh, that particular uh, setup and finally, people have rising wedges and falling wedges. So price might have pushed up, and then actually what will happen is, you know, price is looking, it's grind is getting smaller. It's kind of pushing up, okay? It's kind of less people to the party. It's trying to push up, and what we tend to see is that, effectively, it just it runs out of energy and rolls over. And on the opposite side of that, a falling wedge is price has been descending, and then it continues to sort of grind its way down. It's looking, it's grinding its way down, but actually, you know, it's running out of energy. Okay, the bulls are stepping in, right? They're providing support, and then basically price flips and, and races off in the other way. So, 
So, you know, my personal favorites are, you know, double tops, double bottoms, head and shoulders, all right, patterns, but wedges, you will find and see them there as well. We might actually see today when we look at it. So we had a look at candlesticks. If we had a look at reversal patterns, let's have a look at the kind of, you know, the, uh, um, you know, the next element, which is not an element that people really particularly look at very often. People will look at price action candlesticks and price and patterns, but, you know, not often, all right, will they look at, Okay, previous days, highs and lows, all right? The truth of the matter is markets are still traded by humans, all right? You know, there might be increasing amounts of algos doing, but those algos have been programmed by humans looking for particular patterns. Humans look at charts for usual, or maybe unusual, depending upon your definition, places for them to do their business. Things like big round numbers, they are still you know, applicable on intraday trading, but also previous highs and lows and in particular you know previous days and previous weeks highs and lows are tradable opportunities because what you're doing is there is a level there that is easily identifiable by everybody by other traders by market makers okay by you know corporate businesses wanting to do business there right there are it's a levels that are easily identifiable it's where people are putting their entry orders it's where people are putting their stop loss orders and so there was going to be business there it could be a bit scruffy it could be a bit messy but there are areas okay where the market is going to make a decision right that's what we have to think about it's an area where the market is likely to make a decision and what it does that provides tradable opportunities for ourselves ladies and gentlemen and this is where it starts to become interesting you know especially on an intraday basis you know, as I've just said, previous highs and lows are tradable because there's usually lots of stops there, right? Lots of stop losses there. So they become attractive areas for dealers, okay, for market makers. Why does that make it attractive areas for market makers? Because market makers only get paid when orders get triggered, right? Because market makers, their pays, they're getting paid on their, their commissions, okay? You know, their, uh, their commissions from, you know, from the orders. So they're always interested in areas where lots of orders are sat. That's what happens there is it offers a point for a mean reversion trade, okay? Now that's what we're particularly looking for. An ideal, it's an ideal area where it's set up for a reversal trade. And so we'll have a little look at a few ideas. Sigurd says, what time zone to use for measuring 24-hour trading day? Um, uh, well, you know, Sigurd, what I'm normally looking at, because, you know, I'm based here, I'm based here in the UK. So, you know, for me, you know, what I'm looking at and focusing on here today uh, is, is, you know, I'm going to be looking around basically the, the start of the European session. So, you know, from really what we're seeing from 6 a.m. UK time onwards is the sort of end of the Asian session. 7 a.m. then becomes sort of open off at Frankfurt, which is 8 a.m. Frankfurt time. And then in particular, we start to get the London open, okay, at 8 a.m. London time. And then we've got that kind of early morning session till around about half nine, which is when, half nine London time, which is when we a lot see a lot of UK news comes out. Sometimes we see European news come out at 10 a.m. UK time. Uh, and then, you know, the market tends to a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a quiet period. Not always, but generally quiet period over the lunchtime. And then it gets ready for the US session. So it is quite possible that, you know, you, you know, as you become more experienced, there will be days where you might see, you know, a trend in the European session and a reversal, all right, in the uh, in the US session. Sometimes you might see, you know, an overnight Asian trend that is basically reversed in the European session. Um, what I say is, you know, it's important to just basically recognize and understand which time zone you're trading in and what you're most likely to, to, to see and expect. So, uh, very good question, Sigurds. Thank you. Uh, thanks for thanks for that. So, you know, what I'm looking here, previous uh, highs and lows, I think, what's this? Dollar Swiss 15-minute chart, okay? And, and it's just, I just want to be able to show you where, you know, oh, sorry, it's uh, Aussie dollar, my apologies, is that, you know, the last 15 minutes, okay, you can see that the previous day, there was quite a lot of pushes up to the highs, and then what happens here is the next day, the next day actually when we get a bit of news come out it rallies its way up to you know where exactly well yesterday's previous day's highs all right and what, what does it do well in fact it basically it reverses off that now you know looking at that you know that particular one the price action isn't particularly pretty there's not really 
any major kind of you know uh, um, any kind of major sort of you know setup sort of you know maybe the rejection candle there that would give you an indication that it's likely to reverse but you know, what we want to do is just show examples of how you know markets when they you know they, they recognize these levels and, and so can you okay so can you it's it's areas at which market is, is going to make a decision one way or another and that is you know that's an area because there's lots of very interested keen eyes looking at that particular level looking for what's going to happen next uh, this is euro dollar 15 minute chart you know and, and you know one of the things i want you to be able to do is just go away and open up the charts that you're looking at at the moment you know what i always find useful is you know on the metatrader platform you can put in your period separator so you know these are each of the different days uh you know and what we can see is that you know the the, the kind of the high of this day well you know the next the next day it breaks it okay and then it comes back and reuses it as support before it rallies up again and then actually when it comes down the next day the next day what happens is it hits the the low of the previous day and then basically has a reversal up from that before it rallies its way up it has a high there that day and the next day what happens is it, you know the first couple of touches it comes up and reverses away off it okay so you know the it, the, the markets recognize these levels and you know and, and uh, you know i'm not putting out um perfect examples here these you know there's a bit scruffy these are a bit you know they're uh, you know they're a bit um yeah as i said a bit a bit scruffy nothing not perfect because if you've traded intraday trade markets long enough you'll realize you know there is no perfection okay you know it becomes a little bit of experience a little bit of practice of just starting to be able to identify and recognize and draw in these particular areas and levels and and with time see how markets react to them and you know as i said think of it as it's an area where the market is likely to make a decision right and if you know you're identifying those levels then you're starting to see price action reversal patterns price action candlesticks well then that starts to you know bring elements together for us to to, to start to form trades off for trade ideas off um pound yen okay um pound yen you know here we go the the uh, kind of previous days, previous days high here, okay, where it falls away from, and then what happens is it comes back up to it, prints a uh, you know a rejection candle pin bar before it drops away, before it comes back up again, okay, touches it again before it falls away down. Then overnight, what we see here is you know this is the daily low. What happens is price pulls just beneath it, okay, and then sets up a nice bear squeeze before it rallies all its way back up, and then what happens is price rallies all the way up to the previous two days highs and actually what you can see is you know the price action is quite scruffy isn't it before it rallies on there's nothing really terribly redeeming or pretty about that price action there and that will sometimes happen remember it could be very unpretty scruffy because there's likely to be lots of orders there's likely to be lots of entry orders there's likely to be lots of stop loss orders there so it's not unusual that to see price when it get up to there sometimes it might be very very scruffy and, and indecipherable and that's okay right that's not your job to project onto the market what you want okay it's not your job to basically you know sort of uh, uh you know sort of have divine intervention of recognizing you know when the market is scruffy around those areas my suggestion is just <clears throat> let the market do its thing don't try and don't try and sort of force force a trade because whenever you try to force a trade it rarely works well ladies and gentlemen uh you know yeah and i've just included a few examples here okay this is and against Canadian dollar 15 minute chart as you know we can see here price has a you know you might even call it a triple top there okay before it falls all the way down to the uh, the lows of the previous day uh and what we see is you know the next morning okay these this is the low of that date price once again and this sometimes happens as price pushes beneath it okay beneath the previous day's lows but actually do you know what it does it puts in a false breakout there before it rallies all the way up and we can see when the news comes out what happens is price rallies and where does it lead to? It rallies exactly to the previous day's high before it drops down strongly again. Okay, now that's that's quite extreme. Okay, you now we wouldn't be expecting you to to trade that, but what it is is, is just a reinforcing that you know markets recognise these levels. Traders see these levels. Okay, markets recognise and traders see them. You know, it is areas where markets are going to make decisions, and if it's going to make decision, it's well worth you being able to identify and work with it and see them yourself because that might give you an opportunity to take a trade and what you know you're noticing hopefully is that uh, let's clear these down a little bit is that you know when price does overextend it basically tends to trade back into its areas you know, where effectively when it's traded down through here what it's looking to do is it trades back up 
when it comes back up to this previous high, it trades back down. All right. And what we're, remember what we're saying is that, you know, generally, I think, you know, most of the time on an intraday basis, markets can be quite range bound. All right. You know, they might have big swings like you can see here. But actually, you know, the, you know, over the day of the two days of the week, it might actually not have moved a great deal at all. And that is useful information for us to know as, uh, as traders. Alex says, how many waves would you see in general before the market's turning? Um, I, I'm I think I'm going to. I'm going to presume that you're talking about maybe uh, Elliott waves there. Um, uh, I don't particularly use Elliott waves. Okay, it, what I might look at or interest is that you know I think sometimes things happen in threes. Okay, in terms of you know if, if uh, you know for market you know if a market makes you know if a market makes a uh, you know a high and it isn't tapped within three days, well then the market is probably going to roll over. Same for for lows. But as a general, in terms of kind of Elliott waves, trying to count those kind of uh, impulse and counter waves. Yeah, I, I don't particularly utilize them myself on an intraday basis. That's not to say that you couldn't. And that's not to say that, you know, there won't be people who do. It's just for me, um, I like to try and keep it as uh, as simple as I uh, as simple as I possibly can when it comes to my own intraday trading. Yeah, you're very welcome, Alex. Uh, and, you know, and basically this is, you know, kind of Euro sterling here and, and how um, and how we can see that, you know, during the day, price has a real strong rally. Remember what I was saying earlier is that, you know, when price starts going vertical, it rarely lasts and it drops down here. And we can see actually the 200 period moving average has been acting as some really nice dynamic support there. And then the next day, what happens is, you know, it bounces and it puts in a, a double bottom there off the uh, 200 period moving average. Right, rallies all the way up to the previous day's high and then reverses off it. Okay, there's a rejection pin by candle before it kind of drifts its way back down into the range. That's where it's um, that's where it sort of sort of comes. Okay, um, so uh, um, so I'm just looking at his questions here. Uh, so uh, uh, Sigurd says yesterday's high and low differ a bit depending on what time zone you're using for measuring midnight. We just use official. Um, you tend to, you know, use my own suggestion is that, you know, just uh, trade what you see in front of you. OK, trade what you see in front of you. You know, what you might find is that, you know, depending upon where you're a method trader platform, there might be one or differences. But there's generally not big enough differences, OK, to, to make a massive difference. And the reason being is that most of the moves, OK, in those FX markets are happening in the European session and they're happening in the US session. So by the time you get towards the end of the, the day, the vast majority of time, there isn't there isn't a huge amount of difference, OK, when we're coming to kind of midnight time, if we say you know, midnight time, European time, OK, it, it doesn't it's not a, it's not as big a difference as you might actually, uh, uh, as you might actually consider. Larshin said, after being suppressed and battered for days, euro dollar amount a strong rally today and it's still looking solid. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And you know, and, and uh, you know, as I said, eighty percent of the time, you know, markets are range bound and intraday basis. But when they go for a trending day, they really do go for a trending day. Okay, and that you know, when you get an understanding of that, what that's happening, well, then then you can use your sort of trading trends for beginners. The ideas we discussed in the other, uh, in the uh, in the other webinar there. Savarkin says, what indicators do you use when you trade? Um, I'm, I'm very, very simple, Savarkin. I hope I've pronounced your name there correctly. If I haven't, I do apologise. Um, you know, you'll see from my charts that I have a 20 period moving average, a red 50, a green 200 uh, and fractals there. Uh, I will also use a, a daily and weekly high and low indicator that will actually just draw on the previous uh, days and highs and lows. There is nothing special about them. Those are just standard MT4, MT5 indicators that you can find around the bazaars. Okay, so it's uh, Darshan said close always deemed as a yeah, US East Coast 1700. Yes, that is correct. But also what you might find is that it depends also when your uh, MetaTrader platform uh, close. Gert says uh, MA20, MA50, MA200. That's correct, right? Just that's why you always use very, very, uh, very, very simple. But you know, uh, you know, remember, moving averages are fabulous for trading trends, okay? And they're fabulous for identifying dynamic levels of support and resistance, right? But you know, if you're thinking about this, what we're looking at is, you know, what I'm saying is, you know, when markets do you know, on an intraday basis, they might they might expand out a little bit. But then it's very often that they will return back into the um, reverse. So you're looking more at the price action than, than, at, than at moving averages uh, in terms of trading reversals. Yeah, uh, and so yeah, I think I've just put quite a few examples in here. Okay, you know, the low here there was up towards the end of the day. 
okay, which I tested, but before I put in you know, a bullish rejection candle and away it went. So, you know, remember what I was saying, it is about, you know, recognizing, you know, it's a level where a market's likely to make a decision. And what we're expecting is because we think markets are most of the time range bound, the likelihood is, is that it is going to effectively reverse back into the, uh, into the range. And then doing that, that gives us an opportunity to, to trade back into, in towards that. Um, you know, and this is just kind of something because some people, you know, I've, you know, I know traders themselves who will identify the exact lows and literally put orders at the high or the low. They'll basically literally to, to trade back into the range. Um, some people do that. It's not my start to see, you know, what happens when the price gets to that kind of area, how it starts to play out. So in this, I mean, in this particular case, you get effectively, you know, what is would look at as like as a, an inverse head and shoulders there. You might say it's a double bottom, a triple bottom. You know, you've also got you know rejection candles there before price basically rallied up for the next couple of uh, next couple of hours. So I don't put orders directly at those particular highs and lows to sort of trade back into the range. I like to see how the market plays out. Okay. Because because I'm there where the market's going to make a decision. So I'm happy to sit and watch, okay, and, and, and trade what I see based upon what I'm looking for. But I, you know, I know other traders will effectively just effectively fade the uh, fade the high and the fade the high and the low. Uh, Sigurd asks, what's the ATR 100 for? Um, that is just really to give me an idea of a, uh, basically, you know, a, a, the kind of range for that session, which I might use for my uh, might use for my particular stop loss. It might also give me an idea where my uh, where my target might go, depending upon whether the kind of you know that particular day is a, is a is you know is a kind of a day of expansion or it's a, you know it's a, it's a small kind of ranging day. Uh, and yeah, I think I've put uh, more examples in here, but you know I thought because we're running out of time, what we'll do is we'll we'll switch to the to the live markets now. You know, as Darshan recognised, you know we're actually on the last two day or two is a kind of bit of a trending day more so than a reversal day, but you know we'll have a little look at some. To, to, to identify but what i want to be able to see and recognize especially for new traders so identifying those previous days highs and lows is an area where we can you know see markets doing business and that might be where you know is idea for us to sort of trade a, a reversal uh, pattern from uh, and you know, this one is a kind of an overnight but it's you know it's it's because simply because you know it's drawn on here this was kind of previous days highs and lows and actually the price gets up here overnight and pr prints a double top one, two, three, before price drops all the way back down to the 200 period moving average. And so remember what I was saying, you know, looking, identifying where the previous day's highs and lows are, you go, once price is there, how does it react? If it prints a reversal pattern, like a double top, that's an opportunity, Gabe. That is a good enough opportunity for me to be able to trade back into the range. So, you know, remember what I say, most times, I believe on an intraday basis, markets are range bound. So when price reaches a boundary, like the previous day's high or low, then I'm looking for um, you know, a, a reversal setup, a mean reversion setup. I don't just automatically buy or sell the highs, and I don't automatically just fade them. What I'm looking for is a you know, reversal setup so that I can trade back into the range, and that's the way I like to, uh, to, to operate. So here's, here's a little task, a little bit of homework for you for, for the weekend coming. Go away and open any chart, okay, on an intraday time scale, five, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, okay. Draw forward the previous days, highs and lows, and, and then look at how does the market react when it hits those levels. Does the market regularly break those levels or does it bounce off those levels? And if it's bouncing off those levels, is it printing reversal patterns or reversal candlesticks that might give you an opportunity for where to, to, to place your trade? So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, trading intraday reversals is possible. You should always be aware of impending news announcements. Don't don't trade in front of them on an intraday basis. Remember what I said. I believe still that eight percent of the time, intraday FX markets are practically range bound. So learn, okay, how to trade reversal or mean reversion setups. Remember, we're looking at particular price action candlestick patterns, particular price action reversal patterns, and also see how price reacts around those previous days highs and lows because they are good areas to find a trade setup okay which we will look at in in other asset classes uh, in future particular sessions
So, you know, if you've got questions about this or you want to contact your uh, account representative, you can do. You can see there, admiralmarkets.com or global at admiralmarkets.com. Um, I hope you found that useful. If you just uh, bear with us a minute, what we'll do, we've got, we've got a couple of minutes and what I'll do is I'll just quickly switch across to the uh, to the uh, uh, Admiral MetaTrader platform and we'll see, you know, what, if anything, has been setting up today. Um, as I said, it is a bit of a trending day because of what we saw happen in the markets last night and overnight, but listen, we'll always have a look. So let's just bear with me a moment and we'll uh, we'll have a quick look for the last couple of minutes. Okay, so, um, you know, what we have here is the, uh, um, this is, I think, yep, this is just basically the, um, this is my dollar, US dollar profile, uh, actually, you know, what dollar index is that, you know, we can see that's the 30 minute chart, is actually what we can see is the price is just effectively today has just been rallying, it's dropping its way there quite strongly, you know, and that sort of starts to set the tone, you know, especially if you're looking at uh, dollar, um, at, you know, particularly the, 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 the dollar currencies, um, if I have a look at here, you know, we can see here overnight that is, you know, that's effectively, you know, that's a really big run there already before before we came out of the Asian session, which is this grey block. You know, we had already basically broken through, we'd already basically broken through the kind of previous day's low. And effectively, this was a, a very strong trending day. And now as we enter the US session, well, now we're starting to see, well, hang on a minute, is it a bit oversold? There's, you know, there's a key reversal pattern there, which is kind of making up a kind of a messy, I'd say, you know, messy sort of, a, you know, double bottom there, okay, that might uh, might happen. But the, the truth is, you know, it's pretty much made a strong move there already. You know, today is a trending day, all right, because of what we've seen. There's been some really, really particular strong moves. Move. So if I, let's have a little look at what's been going on at, uh, with the sterling pairs just for the last minute to finish us, uh, finish us off. We'll see what, uh, what's what been going on there. As I said, you know, it's a, it's a trending day. It's a pretty strong trending day, what's happened here and stuff. So, you know, as I said, 80% of the time, we have markets a range brand, but 20% of the time, you know, maybe there's one day a week where it basically the market is going to trend. And if you can identify that early, well, then you can trade trends with it. But when it's, you know, it's slow, you can do it as a... Uh, as a as a reversal so you know if, if i look at pound against the swiss franc here what we've seen here is there we go you know we're at previous weeks low price has been in a strong down move okay strong down move we can see yesterday all right yesterday we you know in fact the day the last couple of days we've come back up to these levels which have been the previous days highs and lows then we put in an evening star formation that's the previous days highs and it dropped its way down here then it basically came down and put in a very scruffy the double bottom there at the previous day's lows and today has just been a real trending day and actually down to the previous week's lows here and it was looking here looking like it was putting in a double bottom there wasn't it okay but it's uh, if i go down to the 15 minute chart yeah you know there was a there was a morning star there okay the previous week's lows it's putting it making it into a double and, you know it's drifted up but i think today is just a today is just a, everybody piling into the swiss franc now it might maybe it'll put in an inverse head and shoulders there but i think today is just a today's a strong trending day okay and as we get towards the end of the day remember you know a lot of the uh, american although the american market will be open today there won't be many people doing it because most people have you know they've had thanksgiving yesterday to take today off okay now you know black friday all off doing shopping um so it's you know it's been a it's been a bit of a crazy day like that okay but still you know interesting to see how the price has reacted there around the uh um, the previous weeks uh the previous weeks low um previous yeah this kind of let's see pounding against us dollar pounding against us dollar okay this is the 30 minute yesterday okay it came down to the the previous day's lows and then it looked like it faults broke out there with a rejection candle before it drifted up Today it came back down to it and it came out through the Asian session at yesterday's low, put in this really big, you know, I think that was kind of UK COVID announcements and has just basically reversed off there, you know, and just rallied its way up. Hasn't made yesterday's high there, okay? It's just rallied its way up off there. Um, Euro sterling, what's that done? Yep, yeah, Euro sterling has, Euro sterling has, you know, is a has been kind of curious is that today you can see it's just very strong and that's put in, that to me is put in a double top there it actually might actually even, maybe even a triple top there but as i said it's a bit of a it's a bit of a strange day today we're, you know, we're on a we're on a very strong trending day um there okay so vincenzo says pound swiss seems in a 
change now. Uh, yeah, and I, I would agree. After the big strummers, it's been a very, been very much kind of a, a really trending, strong trending day today. Okay, and as I said, eighty percent of the time it'll be range brown. It'll be one day a week. Okay, maybe two days a week where it'll really trend. Today, as I said, is a bit of an interesting day. All right, it's a real trending day. So once you identify it's a real trending day. My suggestion is, you know, don't fight it. Don't fight it unless you get very, very clear, very, very, you know, clear and coordinated uh, reversal patterns at uh, at particular levels. So um, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you know, we we have to draw to a close. As I said, you know, we can talk about this for for days and hours and weeks. But what we will do is, you know, I'll put more of these particular, you know, trading these, uh, F, you know, intraday reversals. I'll put more of those sessions on in the future, so be sure to uh, to sort of uh, uh, join us. Alex, saying, can we find the record in YouTube? Paul, uh, yes. You know, if you uh, look for the uh, Admirals, okay, Admirals YouTube uh, channel, then what you'll be able to see is uh, is you know you will see eight. Hey, this will go on here probably in the next day or two, but you will see all the other previous videos that we've done about those price action patterns, those price action candlesticks. Plenty there for you to uh, to keep you busy over. The coming head. So, uh, as always, um, you know, basically, it's just, uh, you know, thanks very much for uh, joining us. All right. You know, it's been great to have you here. Thanks for all the interaction. It makes for an interesting session. Um, as always, you know, I just wish you the very, very best of success with your uh, own trading, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll uh, look forward to speaking to you soon. And until then, trade well, everybody. Cheers. <laughs>